So I've been fascinated lately about how to use a 3D printer to make templates for woodworking. Uh, these can be templates for decorative things like this inlay, uh, walnut and white oak here in which it's two pieces. One is the, uh, the part and the other is the negative cut for the, uh, the relief, so to speak. Uh, or they could be useful pieces like using uh, 3D printed templates to make uh, a, a router table. Uh, or, or to get an exact cutout for your router base to fit in. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I did it. Uh, I don't do this all the time and this is something I simply worked up because I've been thinking it was sort of low-hanging fruit if you have a 3D printer and you like to do woodworking and have a, a router. So let me show you how I made these and maybe it'll make you think about things that you can do in your shop. For our test piece we'll lay out a simple pattern, uh, several inches square, We'll pull up the thickness about a quarter of an inch just so that we'll have something for the bearing to write against. Uh, you can draw anything on here that you want for your, your shape or your, uh, what you're going to try and cut out. You can make a, a couple of circles uh, and then uh, remove their uh, inner piece and uh, play with the thickness so that it becomes a, a hole, so to speak. Got to use the push-pull tool, idiot. There you go. Uh, so it's pretty quick to make your pattern uh, rather than drag you through how to, to draw because you may use a different tool. I've already got a pattern here made up, uh, one that's got some interesting lines to it that I'll simply place on top of our base piece. There we go. Now if I get the screen over, there we go. Um, from there, it's just a simple matter of we'll go ahead and make a copy of it before we commit it to being here so that we've got our positive. Uh, so we'll end up with two shapes. Uh, this one will be the, the outside or negative. Uh, we'll just take that over and make a copy of it. Uh, and then on the, the original pattern, we can go ahead and simply push that through. Oh, still got the wrong piece selected. There we go. Don't do that. I don't use SketchUp too often, so it takes me a while to remember the, the commands. So there we go, we'll get that one pushed through. Oop, wrong again. Waiting for that magic moment where it gets transparent. Controls, there we go. Control Z is your friend with SketchUp. Uh, anyway, so now we have our negative that is based exactly on the size of the positive that uh, I had drawn off camera. Uh, now we're going to do a trick here that I've learned from testing this out a little bit and we're going to reduce the size of the positive ever so slightly. Uh, SketchUp has a uh, follow me tool or, or an offset tool where you can come in. I come in 1 1 28th and that's based on how my 3D printer prints. Uh, if you're a 3D printer tends to make things uh, oversized or undersized, you, you, you'll you want to play with this. It doesn't hurt to make a couple of them. So now that I've made a, a duplicate line on the inside, I'll delete the outside line. So that gives me a positive that is ever so slightly smaller. Uh, and then I'll increase its thickness as well uh, by that one quarter of an inch. So here I've got uh, my negative and I've got my positive and they're ready to export as a shape file for 3D printing. I'm not a 3D printing expert. Uh, I simply use Cura as a slicer. So I'll bring in my uh, shape files that I make in SketchUp or Fusion 360 uh, and position them on the uh, print bed. In this case, I was thinking I could print them both at the same time, but I made my test piece or sample a little too big, so I couldn't print them both at the same time. But that's not a big deal. I just print them separately. Once Cura makes the G-code files, uh, I load them on the printer. And here I am printing the negative. Uh, it takes just a, an hour to two hours to print each one. I use hairspray on my heated bed, so it really helps the part stick, but it does uh, make it a challenge to pull up. And there's the negative, nicely printed. And the same process uh, applies for the positive. Uh, clean the bed, load the G-code, print it, uh, leverage it up very carefully, uh, and now we have our positive shape. 
My printer leaves an almost imperceptible lip uh, on the first layer. Uh, it's less than a fraction of a millimeter, but I can feel it. Uh, to make it absolutely smooth, I'm just running the parts through the router. Uh, and then once run through the, uh, the router with a pattern bit, they fit together as you would expect. This is some amazing tape that I use for most of my patterning work. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. The stuff just holds and holds. It's actually cloth. Uh, so here I am. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a good amount on the negative and put that down on the stock that I'm going to cut the negative out of. I don't want the router bit to get gummed up, uh, so I'm cutting the tape out uh, from where it covers the uh, holes in the uh, negative pattern. Peel off the backing and position it where you want. In this case, I'm just trying to generally center it in this piece of white oak that I've got, a scrap. Uh, not that I don't think I'm going to end up doing anything with this, but uh, it, it, you know, I want it to be square. You have to take the thickness of the pattern piece into account when setting the depth of the router bit. So here I am trying to get an accurate measurement. And I'm also getting an accurate measurement of the approximate thickness of the piece I'm going to do the inlay with. Once I know how deep the router bit needs to be, I simply uh, route out along the edge. Uh, and then after I've got the edge routed using the pattern bit, I will route out the heel. Uh, hate routers, they make a lot of noise and a lot of dust, but they're really versatile. When the inside field is routed, uh, it's pretty be much a simple process. Uh, get the glue up, or the tape up rather, uh, and take a look at it and see if you got a clean cut. So the negative template and the patterning bit uh, made a really nice cut in the base piece. The process is same for the, uh, or the same for the positive template. Uh, put some of that mighty stickum tape down, uh, get it trimmed up, and stick it to where you want it. This is a really bad scrap of walnut that, that's not even the same thickness, so I'm kind of trying to figure out where I need to put it. Um, There's a nice spot of burl uh, or, or crotch grain right there in the cutoff, so I'll take that piece out of it. Uh, one thing that's important here, though, is if you're cutting thinner pieces and you may cut through the piece in its entirety, I'm going to tape the back as well and then apply that to a backer board uh, so that in the event that I cut through it by mistake, it won't move around on me. And the backer board is just a piece of plywood a uh, piece of scrap that I use for a hundred different things. So the routing out the positive is actually easier. You don't have to cut out the field, so you simply have to go around it at the, uh, the depth you want to make. Uh, so here I am being very careful to keep the router upright and the majority of the router base pressed down on the pattern. I'm going around a, a second time just for good measure to be sure that I've got a clean, crisp edge. And the end result is I did cut through it in a few areas because the board was uneven thickness. Um, but what I'm doing here is marking the corners where the router could not get to because a round bit can't cut into uh, sharp corners. Uh, once they're marked and I know what I need to do with hand tools, I can go ahead and uh, take off the almighty glue, uh, tape and uh, then head on over to the bandsaw to, to get the piece broken out of the parent wood the rest of the way. 
I'm not trying to be accurate here. I'm gonna I'm gonna trim the majority of it uh, perfectly with a pattern bit uh, using the router. Uh, so all I'm trying to do here is get down to that cut zone so that I can use the router to make a perfect clean edge. I've got the same 3 8 inch pattern bit that I'm using for all of this work. It's very small, so you don't have to risk putting too much of the bit in. Uh, and I've got it set in. It's got the bearing on the bottom, so I've got the piece upside down, and I'm just trimming it uh, to fit. Those inside corners that I marked, I've got to cut them out by hand. Uh, use a good sharp chisel, and there's lots of flat area to lay the chisel against. Uh, but, and, you know, a good lesson there is don't be afraid to make patterns or pieces that can't be routed uh, simply because uh, you can work with hand tools. So we have our 3D printed uh, parts that made a negative and a positive. So I'll uh, simply uh, smear some glue up and get the, uh, the, the inlay inserted. Yeah, I've tested it before here. It is a, a generally perfect fit. There's there's a couple of minor uh, gaps, but nothing that won't disappear with finish. Uh, and I'll go ahead and put some finish on it and take a look at the result. Since the uh, walnut was so irregularly shaped, run it through the planer or the thicknesser just to get everything down to the right size and then I'll square it all up on the table saw. A coat of Osmo to bring out uh, the contrast and the beautiful figure in the walnut uh, and I guess I'll use it as a, a hot plate or a trivet. So now you're thinking, um, you're thinking, James, this is great, but I don't need to make pretty shapes in my woodwork. It's more of a proof of concept, though some folks may find uh, inlay work uh, exciting and interesting. It is a way that you can branch out. Suppose you wanted to make uh, matching dovetails to reinforce a crack in a piece. Suppose you had to make a filler piece to remove a, a damaged area. Uh, the, the pretty piece is, is certainly uh, fun, uh, proof of concept, uh, but let's show you how you could use the techniques for something that's more uh, real world and that you might encounter on a regular basis. Let's say you needed to make a base to put your router lift into. Well, this is a perfect example of the same thing. You have a uh, a positive shape which is already made for you. You don't need to make the positive shape, you just have to make the negative shape. Very straightforward, you've got a width, you've got a length, you have a radius, uh, and you can make uh, an item that will let you cut instead of this, you've got that, and the only thing you have to make is this. Now unfortunately this is larger than most uh, 3D printing tables, or uh, bed space rather, uh, but with a little bit of work you can create two pieces that join together. So here is one half of the spacer template. Taken together, you end up with a template that you can use to route out the insert for your router lift, just using your existing 3D printer and measuring tools. Uh, so I'm going to cut an insert or a table for this showing how to use the same template just like we use this one uh, and hopefully the, the technique will sort of grow on you as what you can do with your 3D printer. I've got a piece of Baltic birch here and I've laid out where I want the opening for the router lift to go uh, and I'm doing the rinse and repeat method with uh, the mighty tape uh, putting it on 
all the sides and then I will stick it down exactly where I've marked so that I don't have to panic and try and measure and figure out where it goes. I need a ledge for the lip of the lift so that it uh, doesn't simply fall through. So I've got a, a small nylon fender washer here that's the right size I want to make. And I'll use an old trick of simply using the washer to draw out where the lip goes. I need to leave material in certain places so that the, the mount for the lift can be drilled and tapped into the wood. And I'm just laying those out so I know I need to flatten those areas to the same level. Uh, and just so I don't forget while I'm uh, routing, I'm going ahead and marking the areas that I need to cut out. Got to measure the thickness of the router lift and then add a small margin to it so that I can use the uh, adjustment screws to bring it flush. With the same ultra small patterning bit that uh, I was using before, I'm going to follow the pattern first and then remove the template and then follow the cut for the second go around to get to my final depth. I've cut as much as I can with the template. Now I'm going to pull the template off and use the channel I've made as the guide for the next uh, depth. And this is taking me down to a final depth. And the bit is a little tight, so you'll see me pulling the, uh, the piece here and there. The reason for that is the, uh, the bearings are just microscopically larger than the bit, so as it tries to fit in that slot, it gets pulled. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to freehand uh, with a non-bearing bit, the flat areas or the field areas I need to remove so that they're, they're out of the way and everything's the same height. And once again, positively hate routers. Oh, a dusty, dusty thing. With the, uh, the field removed, I can now go in and cut out where I had made those marks previously. You'll note I had to redraw them once I cut. Uh, I'm just using a simple jigsaw here. And the, the process is, is not one for accuracy. You just don't want to cut too much. You can always go back and cut more, but you can't add it back on. And the real test is, does the lift fit into the hole? And uh, you see it fits perfectly. There is uh, a couple of nicks I made with the router since I don't have a plunge router. I had to insert it manually and I did make a couple of nicks, but those will go in the back and I'm not worried about it. If it's uh, absolutely perfect. I don't have perfect. a uh, plunge router, I've got a little nick, but uh, make the best of the one I got. So that's my brief exploration into using a 3D printer to make templates for woodworking. Uh, I hope it was as interesting to you as it was me. I hope all your uh, projects go well, and if you have any questions, just ask.